Hello, this is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher in Lincoln, Nebraska. I also teach in Toronto, Canada. And my guest today is Eileen Troberman, an Alexander Technique teacher in the San Diego area. And we're, our topic today is 360 degrees of awareness. Eileen, welcome to the show. Thank you, Robert. And what are those 360 degrees of awareness? All 360 of them? You oh. want me to say all of them? I want you to explain the title. You're the one that came up with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I, it is my belief that we really are instinctually designed with a 360 degree sense of awareness around us. Much like animals, you know, if there's a, a deer in the woods and there are these great berries or whatever the deer is really interested in eating and everything is so peaceful and tranquil, that deer still, it's still awake to what's around it. It's not like nervous and jumpy. It's just awake to what's around it. It's part of how we survive. But mm -hmm. nowadays, we don't need that so much. That's useful anyway. But so what happens is we end up going, okay, no, right now my awareness is this computer here, this screen with someone on it. And mm -hmm. so what happens when we narrow our attention is that we actually cut off things. We have to do something to narrow our attention mm -hmm. because naturally, we have this th built in 360 degree, 360 awareness. It's a constriction of some sort. When we narrow our attention, yeah. yes it is, we block. But we have and, to- And part of that, it, it may be mental, but it's also physical. It is absolutely physical and it's a physical feeling. So we dull out and we tighten. Alexander wrote these great few pages about concentration called it a morbid condition, um, that it was trying to, uh, while we wanted to increase the powers of the brain, we were delimiting them, in his word, delimiting the powers of the brain when we actually wanted to increase them. Because we are focused on the narrowing, on the tension of focus. Mm -hmm. So I have a phrase that I use in my teaching, where our attention goes, our direction goes. And so quite often, you know, we're doing an email or something and our attention is there. So our head and spine start going in that direction. And even out walking or something, our attention, you know, maybe we're looking out and around, but we tend to perceive ourselves really more from here down. Mm -hmm. And we don't perceive our back much because, hey, you know, we figure out. Anyway, but because we're, our attention is here. And so we're actually doing something to block back here. And we're actually doing something to block this and our perception up here. So um, what happens then is we don't have a sense of this upward movement here and this freedom on the upper couple of vertebra and how our head balances there because we're kind of from here down. We know we have something here and maybe we put a hat on it or style it or something, <laughs> but, but that's about it. We don't have a lot of sensory information unless we touch it. So, mm -hmm. or have a headache or something. But right. that idea that, that there is part of us that's here. And in fact, we could just notice how we blocking our perception. That doesn't mean we can't focus this way or intend to put our attention this way. I guess I'll say that instead of focus. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm just interested in seeing you and talking to you, I don't need to block this out. It's not like I'm going to be distracted and, oh, no, that, there's that sound. <laughs> no, you know, I'm just not blocking it. If something important were to come up, I would notice it, but I just don't need to block it. I'm here in this wonderful space of my office. And, you know, mm -hmm. so there's, there's 360 around me. The ceiling is pretty far away from me. But that sense, even when I'm talking to you, that I am in that space. There's even, you know, a sense below me. Uh, there's a carpet and probably cement under that. And 
you know, part of the building under that. But just that sense that I'm on this earth, there's a little center to the earth way below that. Don't need to go quite that far out into the stars and east and west coast. And, but in fact, we do naturally have a little perception around us if we don't block it. And it really affects how we move. Because otherwise, right. we move yep. like Yes. Right. And how this topic came up was um, that I, I had noticed um, that I have a habit of sort of bending my knees when I was just standing more than is actually useful to do. Um, and I was kind of unaware of that habit. And my first inclination was to, to, to straighten my legs, not over straighten, but eliminate the bending and uh that improved things a little but you suggested a different approach was which was to uh, let my attention go to what was above me and to have had just be aware and somewhat interested in so for example right now the ceiling here uh, when I'm outside, it's just what's up there. And that automatically kind of encourages an upward release through my, in space, actually, through my whole, my head and my torso. And that kind of takes, took care of the knee bending uh, situation. And the, where I started using it first a lot was when I was walking. I live in a very uh, green kind of neighborhood, lots of trees and, and lots of different kinds of trees. And I just let my attention go to the trees a little bit as they are definitely upward oriented, it seems like. And that would just trigger in me a little upward orientation. And it made my walking easier, and it was no big deal. But it was a it was a big it was a big improvement. But I didn't have to do any real efforting to make that happen. And when you were speaking of it, each time you were talking about noticing above you mm -hmm. um, and noticing the trees. Whenever you mentioned something like that, you even got a little bit more free, a little bit more up. It was, it's interesting because you're thinking about it to describe it, to tell, to tell right. us about it. Mm -hmm. But your body just responded to it more and more and more. So it's really cool. Your head just led your body up and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I do think, I mean, I think when you're out walking, you do have some, you may have some awareness even of what's behind you because you might be hearing people who are walking behind you or hear traffic sounds behind you. But I think it's easy to, to ignore the above part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I just made a point of bringing that in and it seemed to really, it, it seemed pretty helpful. And I think that's someone that anyone can do. Do you have any other specific directions on how to do it? It seems pretty, pretty simple, it's just, being aware that there's stuff above you. Yeah, see again, as you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so cool to see, you know, it just gets even a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. And more free and a little bit more length or upward direction, less pressure. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference in the change in height and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I think of it just, you know, kind of this big, space up here i mean it's pretty usually we have more space up here than we do down here mm -hmm. it's a bunch of junk usually on this level <laughs> you know or things in the way there but yeah just really letting that expand that space up there and enjoying including that um yeah and oh, and that, wow. that just wakes up your movement in that so that was an excellent way to think of it so I think we could leave it at that for the interview. What do you think? Yes, great. Yep. So my guest has been Eileen Troberman, uh, and um, I'll put a link to her website, my website, Alexander Technique website, all, all the important things you need. Thank you so much. <laughs>